Welcome to this episode of the Bible Professor Podcast. Today, I'm excited to have Jeremy Sams. He's an award-winning artist, a painter here in North Carolina. He lives near Greensboro, North Carolina. He's going to talk about some of his paintings and how his Christian faith informs and influences his artwork. And stick around to the end. He'll have a message to share to the world. He'll have a message to share to other artists as well. His website is jeremysams.com. So let's listen in as we are joined by Jeremy Sams on The Bible Professor. Thank you, Bible Professor. <laughs> yes, sir, brother. Appreciate that, hey, man. Uh, I, yeah, I appreciate you a whole lot. Uh, if you could just let my uh, listeners know who you are, some of your background, how you got into art, if you want to share about your family and whatnot, that'd be great as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my name is Jeremy. Um, so I've been painting now for uh, professionally for, I guess, about 26 years. But I started out um, ever since I can remember as a little child, uh, drawing, things like that. So I got some little doodles of things that I did when I was a kid. But ever since I could hold a pencil, I've been drawing. Um, but I didn't start painting until I was in high school. Uh, I finally got an art class in high school. And um, that's when I, my very first time of uh, painting on canvas. And uh, just fell in love with that. Um, so years ago, like my, so my, my mom and dad, um, for instance, where did my art like come from? I guess uh, my dad has always been um, able to, to draw and real crafty and things. He does little, you know, little wood carvings, things like that. Uh, my mom, she can't draw a stick, man, but, uh, but she's real crafty. She's real design oriented. And so I think maybe there's a bit of bits and pieces of both sides that, that played into that. Um, but we didn't have any kind of uh, art structure at all uh, growing up. We didn't know anything about art, you know, like I said, no art classes, things like that. So I just saw stuff hanging on people's walls. And um, so I had no idea you could even make a living as an artist, what you can do as an artist. So I was pretty clueless about all that stuff. And so when I went to high school, took an art class, fell in love with painting. And uh, I think my first painting was a picture of, of the house that I grew up in. And uh, I felt like, man, this is really great. Looking back on it now, it looks terrible. I guess <laughs> it's a terrible painting, but I just had such a good time in it. And uh, so I just kept pursuing that. And I think my, uh, my first paying gig was uh, a man commissioned me to paint a portrait of his little girl. And so I painted this, I think it's about a 16 by 20 little portrait of the little girl. And portraits are extremely hard anyway. So I spent all these hours trying to get that thing just right. And um, then I think I even made the frame out of barn wood and I charged the nice. guy 40 bucks. So I made 40 bucks. I thought, man, this is, this is the way to do it right here. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of my background. Um, I, uh, once I graduated high school, um, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I went to, uh, to college for one year and I was planning on going for architecture because I just had no idea that you could do anything as an artist. So I was looking for something else that was somewhat art related. And so I went for one year and, um, I just got kind of burnt out on school. I thought I'm going to take a semester off mm -hmm. and end up never going back. Um, but one thing kind of led to another, I was working a part-time job at a, uh, building supply store. Uh, in Asheboro, North Carolina. And they had this blank wall and they said, we need to do something on this blank wall. And I just volunteered. I said, Hey, I, maybe let, let me try to paint a mural, you know? And so I painted this mural that kind of incorporated everything that the building supply store um, had there. And so, uh, so one thing led to another where contractors and homeowners and people like that would come into the store and they saw the mural and they started hiring me out to do, work in homes and work in restaurants, things like that. And so um, just kind of started off uh, part-time painting and doing a little odd jobs here and there. And uh, eventually it turned into a, uh, to a full-time thing. So that's kind of my background as far as how I got started in the profession of painting. Okay, cool. And, uh, so Jeremy Sams is joining us today of jeremysams.com. He's a painter and artist here in North Carolina. Um, I want to sh 
share the screen here a moment to uh, show from your website a moment your plain air paintings. And then yeah. I want you to describe for our non-artist uh, listeners what plain air is and just talk about that a little bit, why you yeah. seem so passionate about that. So let me pull this up a moment. And uh, on jeremysams.com, recent plain air paintings, I think this is what's up here. And, um, man, this is obviously mostly outdoor uh, uh, portraits. That one's really th – these are all just so beautiful, Jeremy. Just just uh, uh, amazing, um, amazing work. Um, yeah, thank you. Those are kind of small there. But, uh, well, just talk about that, uh, if you don't mind. What is plain air and why, why do you en seem to enjoy it so much? And I know you've yeah. uh, won awards with it. Yeah, yeah. So plain air is just a, it's a fancy French term. It just means in the open air uh, or outdoors. So um, what got me into that was uh, years ago, actually, when I first started painting, that's, that's just the way we did it. You painted from life because that's, uh, that's all I knew how. And um, not long after I started painting full time, I started working from photograph because it was it was easy. It was quick. And a lot of the clients that that I had uh, working with murals, things like that, you had to be you had to be fast. And so I started working with photographs years ago. And um, so anyway, I started in that, and then I went to a gallery um, a few years later, and I saw some work at a gallery, and I was just really blown away by um, how these guys were capturing reality. And so I looked at their work, and I was looking at my work, thinking. There's there's a certain life that that mine is uh, that mine just doesn't have. And these guys are capturing things that just they look so realistic. And so I asked one of the artists. I said, "What are you doing that that I'm not doing?" And so we were talking about it. And I said, "Yeah, I paint from photograph mostly." He said, "Oh yeah, but you got to go outside and paint. You got to paint from life." And so um, so I took their advice, and uh, I think it was February of 2011. Um, I finally decided to go outside and paint. I went in my backyard, found a little creek back there and um, ended up painting for like six hours and just had the best time. It's a little small, little painting, but it took me like six hours to do it. And man, I just fell in love with it because you're outdoors. You got nature all around you um, and you're getting to, to directly observe uh, the stuff that's in front of you. And that's one of the things that, so as an artist, I'm, I'm not a, um, I'm not an abstract artist or a non-objective artist. I am a representational artist. That's the, okay. that's the genre that I'm in. And Thanks so for sharing that term. Yeah. So Ooh. as a representational artist, um, I'm representing what's in front of me. So when you look at my work, you can see that, oh, that's a beach or that's a tree or whatever, but it represents something factual. <laughs> And so um, that's the way I've always been geared. That's the, the kind of art that I grew up with. Nice. And um, so especially, you know, looking through a, a Christian worldview, that really directs me to want to uh, become the best that I can as far as a representational artist. Okay. So, and yeah. I, I, I want to come back to that Christian worldview uh, yeah. notion in a moment. But let me ask you, um, I know that you uh, have one – uh, a, a ton of awards. Uh, tell me about your, you know, painting in these competitions. Is that pressurizing? Are there a lot of uh, competitors? What What are the, who are the judges? Are they, you know, retired artists or, you know, senior yeah. artists or tell us a little bit about your competitions. Right. Right. So yeah, in the, in the plain air field um, there, there is a whole genre of, of painting. So, there's these competitions that happen all over the world, basically. Uh, but America has has a bunch of them. About every weekend, you could probably go to to one somewhere in the country. Wow! But so what you, what happens is um, for like the national type events, you have to be juried into it. So you'll submit your work, like three images, to a to a judge, and um, they'll pick from all the hundreds of applicants. And you might have several hundred. Uh, depending on where it's at, <clears throat> but they'll pick like 30 of the top artists and, um, and they'll bring them to a location uh, for the week. So uh, it might be, you know, 
wherever, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, mm-hmm. wherever. They're just all over the place. But they'll bring you in for a week and you'll have uh, that whole week to paint uh, that area and usually have some type of boundary set up. Like it's either in the county or a certain city or or whatever. But you got that week to paint that certain boundary and uh, you produce as much as you can. And then at the end of the week, they'll have a, um, a, a show. So it'll be a juried show. So you'll have either some type of curator or maybe uh, another professional artist or, you know, maybe retired artist. There's, there's all different types of judges, but anyway, it's somebody okay. with some type of expertise in, in the art world and they'll come in and they'll, uh, they'll judge the event, you know, the first, second, third place type thing. And then it's usually open to the public and um, you sell your work. And that's the way I make a lot of my, uh, my living now is by doing those type of events. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, Jeremy, back to, uh, I want to talk about how your Christian, I want you to talk about how your Christian faith has influenced your artwork. You know that in the uh, scripture, um, artists are mentioned, those who are called in for the tabernacle to uh, uh, create artistic designs on the tapestry and the fabric. There were uh, stonemasons and carpenters as well. And a lot of these guys, you know, are mentioned um, a couple or a few dozen times throughout the New Testament. Uh, mm-hmm. Craftsmen are mentioned a couple of times in, in the book of Acts as well. And um, so talk about, you mentioned Christian worldview, but ha- mm-hmm. how does your Christian faith, because I know you to be a solid Christian man, uh, and we'll talk about your ministry after a little bit, but. How does your worldview about God, the creator, impassion or influence or, or help you as a creator? Yeah. Yeah. So um, especially when I go out in plain air, when I'm outside yeah. outdoors, um, if I find a certain scene and something captures my eye, um, I have to ask myself usually, why does that capture my eye? Why does that, why does that look beautiful to me? And so when I ask those questions, um, it forces me to articulate what it is that, that I'm looking at and why does it appeal to me? Now that makes sense in a Christian worldview to me, because when I look at it, I'm looking at the same evidence as everybody else, but I look at it and say, wow, look what, look what God made. I mean, obviously, the thing that I'm looking at here is a reflection of his beauty. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when I when I see that, I, I have to ask myself, like, okay, how can I how can I better accentuate this scene that's in front of me so that when I take this away and put this on a wall somewhere, that somebody can have the same emotional impact that I did see in this. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm not I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a great copier. I mean, I can do a little bit, but, uh, but as far as, um, that impact that, that God gives you in that, in that first moment, it's, uh, it's very difficult to, to try to capture that. So a lot of times we have to accentuate little things. I I think of it kind of like, uh, as an artist, um, what we're doing basically is like poetry, like visual poetry, you know, like you guys are, you're, you're linguistic, right? Mm-hmm. So whenever you're trying to tell a story, you're going to tell a story and use words that, that get to the soul of the matter, not just intellectual facts, but you're trying to tell, you know, a story that's going to, to be appealing and to try to capture the soul of it. Mm-hmm. And that's the same okay. thing that I do as far as art. I'm not just trying to take a photograph of the thing, you know, I'm trying to, to accentuate something, um, that that brings glory to God in it. Now, and how how does uh, you mentioned this word representational art, which is what you do, yeah. and I think I understand that. But how juxtapose that with uh, uh, compare or contrast representational art with with um, you know the abstract type stuff? How how do you feel like your type of art more represents the creator or reality or the Christian worldview? Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there are uh, times that you can use what, what they call non-objective art, which is a lot of what your abstract stuff is. 
Mm-hmm. There are ways of using that in a design sense that you can still bring beauty and show, you know, uh, show glory to God in that. Um, but my main focus is, is more of seeing like when I go out in, into a place, uh, there's a truth, there's a reality that I'm looking at. And so in, in my uh, field, in my genre, the representational art, I want to capture that truth and relay that truth, that reality. So it's objective. It's, and that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about representational. It's objective art, whereas uh, a lot of the abstract is non-objective. It might be more about the technique or the material or things like that, whereas in, in my, my uh, representational art, it's more about the thing that I'm looking at. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, as far as the, the Christian worldview in that, um, it's, it's capturing reality. So that's my, that's my, my issue is I want to see, I mean, in a world today that's so fractured and so broken and so just absolutely messed up in different ways, I want to bring uh, a reality. I want to bring people back to reality. <laughs> okay. Know, with the world. I like that because I'm I'm thinking of you know famous art artwork like um, Edvard Munch uh, the Scream or Scream yeah right, and right. you know what with the broken world that we live in yeah that is reality on that level but yeah. you're bringing your artwork does more on the I don't want to say lighter side you provide the hope yeah you know, to to place onto this broken world. So, so yeah. both of these types of artwork then, I think, are useful. I guess is yeah. a good word to use. Yeah, yeah, they are. And what you'll see is with art, art is always a um, it represents the culture, mm-hmm. right? So there's two different ways: it represents the culture, but it also influences the culture. So in the art that I do, it's definitely uh, it, it more represents, like you said, the positive side. Uh, with so much fractured stuff, man, it's so good to go outside. You know, you got all this stuff. If you, for instance, myself, if I look at the news, I will get so depressed because everything just seems to be going haywire. But when I go outside, go down to the river, go down to the creek, whatever, man, it's just like, this is, this is nice. This is beautiful, you know? And so uh, my goal is to, um, to provide beauty and to provide some type of a, more of a hope filled message okay. rather than capturing what, you know, the fractureness of society and culture. I'd rather show people that there is yeah, definitely more hope. You know, Jeremy, I think, you know, I've looked at your uh, artwork. Well, I've seen you paint in person a couple of times, um, but your, your um, gallery, uh, your landscapes gallery on your website, there are only a very few, small handful of those paintings in which you did not include the sky. The the sky mm-hmm. is part of every portrait you do. Yeah. Maybe that's by design to capture not just the beauty of what's out here in nature, but you know, our, our help coming from above, maybe something like right. that or. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, there's different techniques. And so um, the, one of the first things that I do when I find a scene that I like, I'm asking myself, number one, how should I format this painting? Should it be a horizontal painting, like a landscape, or should it be more portrait mode where it's you know vertical? Okay. And once I figure that out, uh, my next thing is always, where does my horizon line go? And so the way that I look at it, if you look back at some of the old art from years ago, some of these, these guys, Frederick Church, Albert Bierstadt, these guys who are incredible you know, landscape painters, when you look at their sky paintings, usually there's a low horizon line. And mm-hmm. so with that low horizon line, what that does, it puts you looking up into the painting, kind of looking up into the transcendental, the things that are way beyond you, right? Whereas if you put a high horizon line in your painting, then your eye is more level and looking down. So it's more about the natural, more about the experience of the viewer 
not so much looking into the transcendental, but looking at what's going on in my life right now. And so I got kind of both. Uh, a lot of mm-hmm. my river scenes are more about the human experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so then I also have some of those other uh, paintings where you're looking more up. And so the way I look at it is as an artist, especially as a, uh, a visual artist, we, we use, um, well, we're visual storytellers. And so we have to tell a story without using words. And so one of my main goals is how do I manipulate the scene um, to tell the story, tell the narrative that I want to tell. And so I use things like that, the placement of the horizon, then placement of the objects. Um, there's a whole science behind all this stuff, you know, in composition. Right. And so in composition, it's all about how do I arrange these elements? And basically what you're doing is you're composing, right? So it's like mm-hmm. you're composing an orchestra. You might have a soloist, you might have some backup singers, you might have the choir in the background, whatever it is. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the way that I look at it. There's a hierarchy within the painting. There's going to be one place that I want your eye to go to first, then another place I want your eye to go to maybe second and maybe even third. So there's going to be elements in the painting that's going to draw your eye through the painting. And so I use that, um, that concept of hierarchy uh, within that. So all these things, especially in design and aesthetics and beauty, it's all representational of God. I mean, you can look at all the way that we design paintings and everything goes back to the character of God. Sweet. Jeremy, uh, what I, we're joined today uh, by Jeremy Sams, jeremysams.com. Uh, he's an artist here in North Carolina. I'm going to pull up a couple of your paintings and actually scribble on them. If that's okay. Okay. I just want to critique or, or uh, give a couple of thoughts of, of what I see in this painting. And maybe you can correct anything, tweak anything, add to it. Yeah. Okay. Just for fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, go here. Um, the uh, garden tomb or the resurrection, uh, Mary Magdalene and, and Christ here. Hang on, I'm going to move on. Here's a really beautiful uh, one uh, Jeremy did here as well. And let me uh, get it a little bigger there. Um, The Lion and the Lamb, is that the name of this painting? Yeah, yeah. And um, how old is this painting? Oh, that's an old one. It's still for sale on the website? No, no, it's already been sold. I do have prints of that. I'm sorry. Say again. So I do have prints of it. It's already sold, but I do have prints. You do have prints. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to bring up one though. That is, um, well, here's one. All right. Two more, this one and another, uh, this one, Jeremy actually painted at my church as he preached, as he painted, preached while he painted. Um, I think if I remember correctly, you were doing, uh, John six, maybe the miraculous feeding. Right, and right. so um, this is just representative of Jeremy's work. Let me pull one more up, Jeremy. This is my favorite of, you know, ones I've looked at personally. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is one of my very favorites of Jeremy Sam's. And um, this is obviously, I, I dare say, I'm going to guess you took the uh, uh, inspiration here from Luke 15, where we have three yep. lost things, right? A lost sheep, right. lost coin, a uh, lost son, or the prodigal sons. Right. But right. I really like, I don't know the artist's terms here, the depth, the contrast, but I see this uh, sheep out here by himself, and he's in grave trouble. You can see the link. You made these cliffs really tall over here. You see the yeah. links. You see the abyss down below. You see the dark here. It's just it's it's ominous. This this guy's in trouble, obviously. And uh, these sheep over here are fine. So Jesus' story in Luke fifteen, he's 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 going to go look for that one lost sheep, right? That that one yep. person he's looking for. But I look at this shepherd and I'm like, Jeremy, you you just really did a tremendous job here. The, look at this shepherd. He first of all, he's risking his life. Second of all, he's got the equipment to do what needs to be done, right? Right. right. And then 
And then this little curve in his left knee, this, this shepherd's foot is planted. He ain't going anywhere. He knows what he's doing, right? This is the good shepherd. Right. Um, anyway, uh, have I misinterpreted or what? anything else going on there that you were thinking as you were painting this particular one? Oh, man, you did great. Yeah, so um, there's, there's ways of looking at it. Uh, you, you're right on track, especially with the main story is that sheep. If you look at the sheep, he's not just sick, but he's dead. I mean, he's okay. he's in terrible shape. Okay. And so I'm I'm thinking of the nature of man in that, and what Christ has to do to bring us to Himself. He didn't just, you know, help us out a little bit. He didn't just give us a little bit of medicine. Like mm. He takes dead things and makes them live. That's and so yeah, there's a great chasm between us and Him. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah then all the stuff in the background, all going down at an angle, all these things are just, you know, symbolic of danger, you know, just heavy danger, um, just a bad place to be, an impossible place to be. And that's really the, one of the themes of that picture is the impossibility of man to come to Christ, except for the grace oh, wow. of God that, that brings us to himself. Okay. That's a great message. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, thank you. Let me ask you, though, what might be a hard question for you, and that is, yeah. what is your personal favorite painting that you've done, whether it be you've done lots of murals on downtown buildings. I've seen some of those in person. You've yeah. painted portraits, all your plain air uh, 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 award-winning paintings, and then your Christian artwork. What is your very favorite, even if it's not in the Christian category, your personal favorite painting that you've done? Okay, so I've been thinking on that because that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, and you know how artists are, uh, and you're probably this way with your sermons and things like that. There's never one that you, you always feel like I could do better, you know? Yep. yep. Um, but I did bring one in here uh, to show you. This is probably my favorite one. Let's see if I can hold this up. Can you see that? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. That's okay. probably my favorite. Um, what country is small. the setting there? Yeah, this is in Burma. Ah. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a, it, it's, I like the composition and things like that of it, but I think just the story of it is what makes it my favorite. It was just, it's called Providence. Um, mm -hmm. We had a, uh, so I do missions over there and um, we were over there me and two other guys and uh we had some interpreters translators with us and for whatever reason one day the translators had to leave so we're there in this country <laughs> all by ourselves. and i mean i can speak enough burmese to to get myself in trouble you know <laughs> all uh, right and so um so we're you know we're in a kind of a mess and so we just prayed about it and said okay what what, what should we do and so we, uh, we decided to go down to the little market and I had been by this little alleyway several times. And it's just a really interesting little alleyway. And I thought, you know, have my paint with me. And that's one of the things that I do is, um, uh, take paint over there and I'll, I'll paint scenes. It's kind of an attention getter. Um, mm -hmm. so I found this little place and I said, let me just set up right here and we'll paint. And so I, I started painting. And we've been there maybe maybe an hour or so. so. We're trying to have conversations as we can, but we're very extremely limited, you know, to what we can actually say and and do. And uh, all of a sudden, this guy comes behind us and says, "Hello, my friends," in just perfect English. And we turned around, just so shocked. And this guy was a Burmese uh, national there, and he was an English teacher. And so he took us okay. kind of under his wing that day, took us back to his home and uh, just showed us hospitality. And we was able to able to share the gospel with him. And it was just a just an in, interesting little experience. So I named it Providence, how God always provides whatever, yes, whatever sir. you need. Yeah. Indeed. So that's cool. probably my favorite. Yeah. So you, 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 man, kudos to you. You seamlessly segue into missions, which is what I was yeah. going to ask you about next. So um, are you still doing mission trips? Well, okay. I haven't since uh, 2020. Okay. Yeah. Since, uh, since COVID happened, they shut the country down. And um, then in 2021, that country had a military coup. And so the, the area, the people group that we're working with, uh, were not allowed 
in there yet. Um, but hopefully, hopefully soon we'll get to go back. Okay. And so yeah. other than your artwork right now, um, are you teaching art as well? And, or what else are you doing? Yeah, I teach workshops. Um, so I'll go to different places and we'll do like a three day workshop and I teach people how to, how to paint and plain air, uh, I teach just basic studio painting, things like that. And, um, then of course I got galleries that represent my stuff also. So that's kind of how we do it. Is your itinerary for your classes on your website? Yeah. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. And they're, they're constantly being updated also. Okay. One, uh, another thing I was going to place on the screen here. So Jeremy Sams of uh, jeremysams.com, this is actually a, a uh, painting he did for his artwork is on at least one book I know of. It's a fest shift <laughs> I did back in 2018, and uh, yeah. Jeremy painted um, uh, a hand drawing in writing in Greek uh, the passage out of Ephesians 2 on which my essay uh, was a was, uh, dealing with and and the hand you painted there actually belonged to another jeremy a mutual friend of ours <laughs> right. that was I, I don't know how that all worked out providence i guess <laughs> that was really cool yeah man this yeah. is this is really uh this has been interesting and enlightening i appreciate you joining us jeremy i want you to share two more quick things though as a christian artist What's your message to the world? And then as a Christian artist, what would be your message specifically to other artists? Do you have a mm -hmm. message for them? Yeah. Yeah. So my message to the world would be that there's hope and peace that's found in Christ. Um, Man. So hopefully whenever they look at my work, there's a sense of peace and hope, tranquility, hmm. things that you can't find in the world today. And I want to point them to the source. And that's what art is. It's always pointing to something. Hmm. There's a message always behind the art. And hopefully the message behind my art is uh, look to Christ because that's the, he's the creator. And he's the only source of peace and tranquility that we can have in this messed up world today. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as to, to other artists, I would say, uh, Keep pursuing excellence um, and look for, I mean, an artist should also be a form of a prophet. We should be able to speak to the culture, not just be a, uh, a mirror of the culture. Okay. I see a lot of, you know, crazy art in the art genre and the art world. And it's um, sometimes scary to look at. But I, I would encourage other Christian artists to be a prophetic voice, like, um, you know, speak out for for truth, for reality. And um, it doesn't have to be, you know, in your face type stuff either. Like, I, you know, I've done portraits of Christ, things like that. But you can also do that through landscape. You know, there's there's all kinds of ways of of, of getting that. And so I'd use the art as a, uh, as a medium to, to speak to others. And I would encourage other artists. Um, yeah. Look through the lens of the Christian worldview and make beautiful things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause you know, I was thinking, as you said that, you know, if you're just going to mirror the culture, you're not helping anything probably. Right. right. Um, so yeah, that's a good point. So um Jeremy Sams, check out his website, jeremysams.com. Thanks for joining us uh, today on The Bible Professor. Yeah, thank you, Mel.